I purchased the entire new collection of LEGO minifigures and upgraded each one. If you happen to receive a dull minifigure, you will discover today how to transform it into an impressive character. Watch video till end. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked ideas for upgrading minifigures. Thanks for watching. While looking for Barbarian, I accidentally bought an extra Harpy figurine. At first I was bummed out because I didn't like this mini figurine. Big weird wings like the ones in Lego sets from a decade ago. But then I started upgrading this figurine. I eliminated the absurd wings, replaced them with a Lego Chima bat torso and incorporated metal shoulder pads. Furthermore, I attached an avatar tail, selected a different head and hands in the appropriate color and embellished the figure with black hair and a beard. Now this character looks like a badass warrior from the fantasy world. You can choose new axes from Gimli's collection from Rivendell or assemble a magical hammer and shield from the weapons. Now he appears extremely threatening. In my imaginative world he will engage in combat with moon elves in order to claim ownership of the moon island. To create a location for this character, use the Forbidden Forest from the new LEGO Harry Potter set. They will look incredibly cool when displayed together. Inside the adjacent box is the absolute coolest figurine of this series, guaranteed to impress. Every detail in it is magnificent. Beautiful prints all over the body, a brand new unique helmet, the comeback of a badass shield with a bat, and a super expensive high quality cape. The same lock from the LEGO set costs $12 on the official website, so this figurine is clearly more expensive than $5. I believe you do not need to enhance this figurine. It is preferable to simply purchase as many vampires as you can. But if you've got yourself a squad of warriors, then you better have yourself a commander. I'm using an old action figure of a bat knight. Gonna swap the head so he becomes a vampire too. I'll add a fancy cloak like Count Dracula's and some shoulder armor and he uses the sword of Gryffindor. With it, he looks more like Baron the Vampire. And I will add a bunch of bats nearby. Additionally, by utilizing this new unique helmet, you will be able to collect a figurine of a powerful demon. I used Dementor from Harry Potter, a head from the Marvel set and a whole bunch of different cloaks. Currently, the army of the undead possesses a powerful lord who embodies darkness and death. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more of these customizations. In the next box is Barbarium. This figurine is definitely underrated. I do not understand why LEGO decided to make Barbarium's hair red, but the rest of the details appear to be really cool. You can create numerous unique custom figures using them, such as a warrior of the forest fauna, or a gladiator for your medieval arena or perhaps a miner who will extract iron ore for your forge. Therefore, I made the decision to purchase multiple of these miniature figures for my imaginative realm. Another popular minifigure in the new series that everyone is hunting for is the shepherd and the white goat. They definitely overestimated this figurine, because the same goat, just like the ram figurine, will soon appear in the new medieval market set which means that in six months you can simply buy it on the official LEGO website. The figurine itself is done interestingly, but it still lacks a layer of white paint under the main design. I think it would be more interesting if we add a brown cloak to the figures for protection from bad weather. Let's put a bottle of water in the bag so the shepherd can go for the whole day. Instead of a stick, we use the classic shepherd's cane. And let's include a special dog that leads the herd, guides them in the right direction, and protects the animals from wolves. Well, you can also enlarge the herd. Now this character appears more similar to an actual shepherd. In the next box, there's a little figurine of an athlete with leg prosthetics. I've seen this part before in LEGO, but in this set, the figure has both legs with prosthetics which immediately made me think of a half-human, half-cyborg. I pulled out my Lego pieces on the sci-fi theme and started modifying the minifigure. I exchanged my head and hands, donned a set of heavy assault armor, stumbled upon a helmet of the right color from a Mandalorian, and made the decision to wield a small blaster as my weapon of choice. In the second hand, you can invest a big badass sword or a heavy-ass hammer to fight them alien monsters up close and personal. So you will have the ability to create a badass space marine or a super pumped up Mandalorian character for your Star Wars themed builds and constructions. 
and thanks to the subscriber for the cool idea of a spider droid. And if you're into Star Wars, go ahead and give this video a like. Let's get 20,000 likes and I'll make a video on this topic. The next figurine that fits well with the fantasy theme is a girl in a mushroom costume. I truly enjoyed the fresh unique detail of the hat and the brand new butterfly design. I utilized my hat to create a majestic mushroom for my woodland. He appears extremely stylish alongside the remaining mushrooms. Let's place the new butterfly here. And here we will alter the figurine itself. Let's include a white skirt, a hood and a patchwork cross. Now this figurine appears to resemble a medieval nun. She will make a wonderful addition to the wandering monk that I have assembled for the town square of my Lego city. Another awesome figurine is a man wearing a dinosaur costume. She appears extremely cool on her own if you are simply collecting a variety of miniature figurines. But if you have got the correct Star Wars action figures, you can truly enhance the level of this character, you know? Let's put some hands on and add a skirt so our hero won't be naked. I completely replaced my head with a part from the Bulio figure from the Millennium Falcon set. Let's incorporate bone shoulder pads, a barbarian shield and a large axe. Now your knights will have a formidable rival to contend with. But if we use the head from another Star Wars character, the bounty hunter Bosk, then we can assemble the famous villain from the Spider-Man movie Lizard. With him, you are able to organize an epic battle between a friendly neighbor spider and a sinister six. Hello, Peter. Following that, we will promptly open two mini figures. One will be a gym goer, while the other will be an esports player. This girl reminded me of a YouTube coach, blogger Pamela Rave. She had many similarities to her. Hey, stop zoning out. I called you here for something else. I'll replace the hair on the figurine, take the tattoo, lay a mat on the floor for workouts and set up a camera. So she is more like a hot mess. Esports players are not that popular at the moment and the outfit on this figure appears to be similar to that of my high school gym teacher. I'll go get him right now. Let's add some grey hair and thick moustache. And we'll replace hands with modern watches and a stopwatch. Nowadays, streamers are more popular than esports players, so we'll build a computer desktop, assemble a modern PC and add new devices with backlighting here. Let's build a comfy gamer chair and set up a good camera for streaming. Every year, female streamers wear less and less clothing. So let's leave her with just panties and a tank top. And let's add a tattoo from a sports figure. Well, of course, we'll put headphones on her for streaming. A little bit of pizza and soda and now it's more like the real deal. Next up is a mini figurine of a detective from old black and white movies. In his hand he has a regular lens and a brand new red herring. So detectives call these details that distract them from the main case and it's a really interesting reference. The figurine itself will come in handy for those who are building on the theme of the Mafia. I got a figurine of Commissioner Gordon from the Batman movie gave him a detective hat and a revolver. This is going to be the local sheriff. I replaced the head and hands of the detective myself and also wore a brown hat and gave it to Tommy, who is old. This is gonna be some mobster shit. He and his partner will be pulling off heists and robbing cars with alcohol and tobacco. The next figurine is interesting, but usually such characters are worth very little. That is a boy in a toy train costume, but you can actually assemble a bunch of cool figurines from it. For instance, envision a man who is carving a wooden toy train for his child. Alternatively, create a slot machine adjacent to the store, where children can ride it in exchange for a small number of coins. And this figurine will perfectly complement the mafia-themed construction. You can make a loader or a driver out of her for your car, which the mobsters will be robbing. The last minifigure is the most difficult and the most boring. She's complicated because it's practically impossible to come up with another character from her. But in this box, the figurine is just an add-on to the main character. The main thing here is the new unique dog detail and it really looks very cool. I utilize her as the Hound of the King for the King's festive hunt for deer and bears in the Royal Hunting Grounds. Got a smash like button, subscribe, hit notification bell. Five is in leveled up figures. See you in next video.